Monday. This Can't is, get rid of us. <laughs> it's Sunday. May 13th, 2018. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. <laughs> Mwah. Okay. Um, so, yes. Welcome. And uh, I just have to tell you, my notes say welcome speech. It's in my other book. <laughs> We are a close-knit family. We are from uh, Armstrong in the North Okanagan region of British Columbia. Uh, we, we are a knitting podcast. We are a knitting podcast. <laughs> or knitcast. I want to knit, call it a knitcast. Knitcast. Okay. Knitcast. Uh, following and documenting um, my adventures in learning how to knit. And, and my and ongoing struggles with my yarn and knitting addiction. Yarning. I mean, eventually, real thing. Uh, eventually we're going to say that I know how to knit, and then what are we going to call this? Just our adventures in knitting? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? The reality, though, is you never I, I you never stop learning. There's something new every time? I've been knitting for, like, 40 years. Yeah. Okay. And you're always learning. Okay. Because, and that was, I was really hoping too, that as we went through this and as you learned things, mm -hmm. that I would learn potentially things too, as we looked at them more closely and I didn't just go, yeah, that's just how it's always been done. Okay. So yeah. So we thought we would bring you an update on the stink. It still stinks. That's the update on the stink. Um, <laughs> I, but you know, well, I guess it's happening later because the sun's going down later. Yeah. Yeah. But we did manage to eat dinner on the deck last night. We did. That was nice. That was nice. Okay. That was nice. Okay. And we now have a Ravelry group. We have a Ravelry group. Woohoo! I actually, I managed to get it set up before we put up the... Yeah. Between filming last episode and uploading it, the group became live. Yeah. So. I tried again and it worked and I don't know what the difference was. So there we go. And I, I don't know... Oh, can you see the sparkle? Oh, here, what's a rivalry group? What is our rivalry oh. group? <laughs> um, it's either a close knit family or close close knit family. <laughs> Caption. <laughs> There'll be a link. Nails. Nails. So I think I said I said a long time ago. That I'm a nail oh. tech. This is the other thing that I have expensive hobbies. Anyway, I'm a nail tech, oh, so I do too. other people's nails. But I am in love with this glitter, and I don't know. Oh, can you see? It's little squares. It's not often you see glitter that's little squares like that, and the color makes me very happy, and it's all holographic and pretty. Anyway, so that's just my little. I love my nails. I did this hand with. I don't like the big round payettes there, but I did this one with flat blue. Don't like them so much. Oh! This will be a do-over for next week. Not for this week, but for next week. Someone, I want to say her name was Martha. I can't remember. I'm so sorry. Anyway, commented a while back. Leave the goatee. Leave the goatee. Because, of course, we had the goatee. You should trim shaved it. Shaved it off. And... Shaved it right off instead. Grew it back. Leave the goatee. So I did want to say thank you for that. And I'm wondering how you feel about mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because I got completely de-haired yesterday. Other ladies of my age would understand that. But um, it all got... I don't have peach fuzz, I'm, and so... Mary, Mary Hudson. Mary, I'm sorry, Mary, Mary Hudson. Thank you so much. And, yeah, so, but now my question is... <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about me without mine? Is it better or worse? Anyway, <laughs> sorry, that was totally off script. Not, not, even, a note, have a script. not even a note for That's it. That's what I kind of meant. Um, so, coming up, I, uh, myself and my husband are going camping next weekend. My glasses are crooked. And um, super looking forward to that. First trip of the year, of course, it's May, in Canada, it's the May long weekend. 
and we are going to uh, the Shoe Swap Lake Provincial Campground, which is on the beautiful Shoe Swap Lake. Beautiful. And if you've been into the interior of BC and hung out at any of our lakes, you've probably either hung out at the Shoe Swap Lake houseboating. What? Houseboat, houseboating capital of we Canada. We should totally do a houseboating knitting retreat. We'll talk. We'll talk. It would be so expensive, we'll, but we'll so talk. much fun. We'll talk. Anyway, <laughs> houseboating. That was spontaneous. <laughs> houseboating, we've done that um, a couple times with yep. family. What a gas. And the shoe swap lake is huge. Beautiful. And clear and clean and beautiful. Or there's the Okanagan Lake, which beautiful. Beautiful. Kalamalka Lake. If you haven't been to this, the Thompson Okanagan shoe swap area of BC, you're missing out. It's pretty darn gorgeous here. Gorgeous. We are very lucky. Um, so anyway, that's me. Looking forward to camping next week. Which means that we may be late uploading our next episode, or we're going to get our get our stuff together and film it beforehand to go up at the normal time. Or we'll each film a segment and or, it'll be up late. Or something like that. But maybe I'll film, you know, something at knitting, at camping, I mean. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. So okay. last week I talked a little bit about bingo and what a wonderful thing I thought it was for keeping us on track. And again, you know, in hindsight, I realized I really kind of over it because I knew we were talking about a lot of stuff and I didn't want to spend too much time on it, but I wanted to make sure I mentioned it. So I realized what I didn't sort of do is say, like, what kinds of things might you put on a bingo sheet and I've seen ones that are pre-made where um, someone else is sort of picking your your bingo items but that's not gonna work for everyone um, so I certainly made mine personalized and the types of things that I've got on my bingo sheet and mine is a five by five um, <laughs> with my center square is make a bingo game so boom got that one right away but um i have on here like line leaf coat so if you saw my long leaf coat last week uh, i mentioned that it's a faux for knitting but i do still want to line it so that that's like a yeah I, I really should get that done um and then i've got like finish finish a whip that i had going because i did have a couple months ago a goal to get like all my whips done before I cast anything new on um, I have a, a, a shawl idea I wanted to design that's completely changed to a different shawl idea that I want to design but that's completely beside the point finish my blue and green shawl we'll be looking at that later um, you know frog there was a thing I wanted to frog so I put that on here as a as a as a bingo item and then I have places where I've just got just as faux 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 so it's like okay if I finish something doesn't matter if it was listed on here to begin with or, or not but if it's a faux cross it off there's such a sense of accomplishment um, cast on a scrappy blanket um, cast on a shawl Cast on a sweater. Finish whip, purple sweater. Was that Melissa's sweater? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, just sort of things that I, oh, sort, stash, and donate. Um, take a class. Anyway, it just, there are things that, um, it's just a fun way to keep on track. And I jokingly told my husband, because I was planning for going to Knit City in Vancouver in September, and I said to him, I said, so my plan is that every time I finish a row, I get, I think it was $50 <laughs> towards Knit City. <laughs> so I'm trying to remember what that added up to. It was like five, uh, 500 and five, something. $600. $600. Well, count, counting diagonals? Yeah. Six hundred dollars. Yeah, and then I said, and then for the full card, I get four hundred dollars. So if I thousand dollars, and he's looking at me and he says, 
And where did this money come from? I was like, well, because I did this. It just miraculously appeared. Yeah. He wasn't entirely yeah. on board with that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Whatever. Oh, and can I just say for Mother's Day today, my darling son gave me a, a gift certificate for knitting stuff. Yay! Yeah. And it's Mother's Day and it's mid-afternoon and this is legal. Cheers. Okay. So, lar y Larn. Oh, <laughs> I'm, Larn. I'm not drinking. Yarn acquisitions um, are in the mail. Yeah. And I, I didn't acquire any yeah. this week. I um I did something I have never done before. I've wanted to many, many times. I get very overwhelmed when I go to the um, Indie Dyer sites and I see all this yarn. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know, you know, oh, I love it. I have to have it. And then it's like, okay, but. Do you? Do you? You know, why? Do you? Why? And what am I going to make with it? Mm -hmm. And um, just. And then, then, oh, but you can get it in this weight, this weight, this weight, this weight. Ah! So this, there was one yarn, and I'll, we'll talk about it next week when it gets here, hopefully. Um, there was one yarn, and every time I came across a picture of, well, no, let me rephrase that. There was a dyer. Every time I came across her work, okay, it's Lolo Did It, Lauren from Lolo Did It. Every time I came across it, I was like, ooh, I need to look further into that. And I'm like, oh, look, it's Lolo did it. And I'd go in, and, and then once on her her site, um, there was this one yarn, and I was like, oh, I have to have that yarn. But, oh, but what am I going to do with it? Anyway, obviously, I decided to get that and, I, and, and more. <clears throat> so, anyway, that's coming. Acquisitions. So, um, and that sort of brings me to, in getting that yarn, I got it for a, a design. Well, actually, two designs. Well, there's actually a whole set of designs that I have up in my head. Okay. Um, and they're they're based on locations around British Columbia. Oh. And some of them. It's just like I have like a color family or something that I want to work on. Some of them it's like, oh, this texture to me is very representative of that region or location or whatever. Um, so there's there's all this thing. But, of course, I'm always like, uh, what business do I have designing anything? But, Mom, you've already designed several things. <laughs> nice segue, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> He's hilarious. Anyway, so somewhere along here, Mike's going to put up some pictures of things that I, I stopped. And yep. I went, well, hang on a second. I designed, like, Mike some Doctor, my, my Doctor Who sweater from the first episode. That Here it is again. Yeah, that one. I designed it. And not just, like, okay, you know, I took charts and made the pictures. But I designed this, the whole sweater. Mm -hmm. I, I made that up. And then I, my daughter wanted one, so I designed her a sweater um, that was based on the Game of Thrones. Game of, yeah, House Targaryen sigil. The yeah. dragon. Here it is. The dragon one. Yeah. Um, and again, I designed the the whole the whole thing because, and I realized that once I got over the, but I don't know how many stitches to cast on. Once I got over that, okay, away we go. And then I also designed, then a friend of Melissa's saw her Game of Thrones sweater and asked me to make him a tiger sweater, which again, I was like, oh, okay, and boom, I made him. The tiger sweater. The tiger sweater. Now, and here's the other side of it that shows the actual tiger. And I would... I would honestly, I would, there are things I would change about that. Like the tiger is not, I'd move the tiger up more, but I didn't know. But in hind, you know, that's something I would have changed. So that's when I sort of went, well, hang on, you know, if I, that was me designing something, but I had never thought of it that way. That was, to me, it was just, I was just knitting something. 
so I, I was like what makes it a design and what makes it just knitting something and I guess it's writing it down and sharing it for other people There's, I don't know the only difference between knitting around and designing is writing it down yeah that's a that's a paraphrase of an Adam Savage quote oh well, there we go Adam Savage of Mythbusters Mythbusters fame so the the actual quote is the only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down. But uh, oh, okay, yeah. there we go. All right, so foes. Foes. Okay, my turn. <laughs> <laughs> I it's it's just that hat that I that I finished last week. So okay, and I'm pulling out old foes as old foes. usual. Not to mean like that they're old foes. But they're they're not recent so the this is um and again i guess it's a little bit false to designing so this is a i know look how big it is don't even start with me this is a skirt which i made and and this is in the salish style and let me just show you the inside um when you're doing salish style knitting you don't have floats and you have this pebbled look because you twist your color every stitch. And this is also a vest done using the Salish style. And again, you can see it's got the pebbled, the pebbled look inside. Isn't that funny? How who but knitters show the inside? The other thing that is Salish style is having these like exposed seams these i think were done actually with the three needle bind off so that you see the seam that's part of it and things knitting it's all done like in the round um uh, hmm. three three needle bind off you'll have to tell me about that sometime or we'll, we'll go over it okay so yeah three needle bind off well we this is supposed to be a learning thing right so oh. three needle bind off you've got uh, two things that you're bringing together. Right. Okay. Um, each of them are on a needle. Still on the needle. Okay. And you have a third needle. Yep. <laughs> this looks obscene. And you have a third needle that you come in and you, you basically knit two together. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so you knit yeah. two together. So now you've got a stitch on this needle, and then you knit two together, and now you've got a stitch on this needle. Now you've got two okay. stitches. Then you pass the okay. stitch over. Knit two together, pass the stitch over. Okay. Two. Yeah, three needle bind off. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there we go. So, and the reason I say this sort of, oh, so these are from... Knitting Stories by Sylvia Olson. And this is a wonderful book, especially if you want to, you know, get into doing a little bit of um, the Salish style patterns. She's got some, um, oh, and sorry, I am so bad for boing. Boo. Oh, there he is, for um, jumping back and forth. But um, Cascade, this was a Cascade yarn. I don't have the yarn bend anymore, so I can't remember exactly which one it was, but not the Highland Duo. It was it's something else. And this is a very woolly wool, and yes, it's scratchy, which is part of the reason I don't wear it very often. I have to make sure I'm wearing something with some substance, like leggings or something underneath this skirt. So that's when I really go out and do my my best hippie. Back to the book. <laughs> um, so Sylvia has some great um, stories in here about um, her time. That was just a page with writing on it. Um, her experiences. Uh, with Salish knitting and her, the time that she uh, spent, I, I keep wanting to say growing up, and that's not true. She she married a Coast Salish man, and 
spent a lot of time knitting with them and within the community and um, there's some really really touching stories in there along mm. with some great patterns so that's that we might try to anyway okay foes that's foes whips whips i have a whip um, so, as we mentioned uh, for the last two weeks now, I am in a cowl for uh, Sean's hat by Knit a Bit of Whimsy. Sarah. Sarah, Sarah Devantier? Devantier? Devantier. Devantier? It's Devantier. Sarah, De Sarah. 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 Um, and uh, so, here is what... The hat looks like in my printer that was running out of ink as I was printing this. Um, and it's uh, it's actually, you can't tell from the photo, but it's actually a double knit hat. So I'm also learning how to double knit in this. And I decided to go for colors with a uh, Estelle blue. Sort of, well, okay, well, here, here it is. Here, here is the, the, fo the, the whip. And, um, yeah, there's, so yeah, th this blue is a, uh, Estelle worsted yarn. The, the, uh, col the color just rolls off the tongue. It is Q61231. There you go. And, uh, I decided, um, I really like variegated yarns. And when I was in the yarn store picking these out, we saw this, this Show yarn. it on the inside. Yeah, here, let me show it on the inside where it's much more clear. Um, this variegated yarn, which is a Malabrigo. Not Malabrigo. 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 Uh, Indicita. Yes. There's, there's a number for it too. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is, this is going a lot slower than I was expecting. It's because you're knitting two hats. You're, you keep saying that. You're knitting two hats at once. And that's, that's true. Certainly. Um. But I'm, I'm and switching yarns and switching, constantly. And switching yarns constantly. You're going knit pearl, knit pearl, knit so, pearl. But it looks like you're. But you only have the uh, stockinette on the inside. For those of you who don't know, double knitting gives you two right sides instead of a right side and a wrong side. So. Um, and the way it's done is if if you see on the needle. My varying stitch sizes. So he's he's got like the the knit pearl knit pearl knit pearl knit it's also pearl. knit held double and, and, and it's held I, double because i chose a, a worsted weight and you're supposed to use a bulky weight and but um and the other thing that we talked about we mike had a had a join in his yarn and we hadn't talked about it before no so unfortunately they had it was a knotted join in his yarn and he just knit over it um so we've talked about joints now. Yeah. And um, we're gonna go back and we'll we'll fix that up. Oh, okay. After the yeah. fact. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm having uh, uh, some imperfections in my in my double knitting. Like there are points where my yarns get because of course you have two two yarns that you're working with, and sometimes they'll get twisted together. And in trying to untwist them, I end up with little bits where there you go. The, the the other side yarn kind of pokes through and and I'm not too concerned about that because I've I'm still learning it's particular it's part I'm, I'm knitting in magic loop it's particularly bad in the in the changing from one half round to the other half round but as I said I'm learning I'm not particularly worried about it right now um yeah the, and this is yeah I like it and it may block out we may, may block we out. may work on it when we block it and see yep. if we can get rid of that. Yeah. Um, the only thing, though, is you are making the larger size, right? Yes. Yes, I'm making the largest size in the pattern. And finding it, it's it's small. It's small. It could that could be also a product of using. We the, didn't do a gauge. Swatch. We didn't do a gauge swatch. It's a product of that, and also you know it's meant to be in a bulky weight, and I misread and not doing a worsted held double. Um, but here we go. Mm hmm. Yeah. Nice. Okay. My whips. So we have the ongoing. That's why it's a whip. The ongoing. Nothing new this week. Oh. But anyway. So the graphite tank is ongoing. So last week 
Uh, so, okay, would, so, you can you can see the line. Oh no, we did that last week, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did that last week. Where you can the, see the line. Right, well, well, now you can still see the so line. So maybe that's where I was. Because otherwise, I don't know why I would have put. Oh, why is there holes right there? Okay, whatever. Oh, look, you can see them too. Isn't that exciting? Anyway, so it continues. This is really my like super boring knitting right now because it is. So when I just knitting straight around and around and around and around. So when I'm I'm really not um, when I'm doing something that I just I don't want to have to think about it. This is my go-to right now for that. I am kind of concentrate. Well, here we'll go to the socks, and they look pretty much the same too. I have didn't, worked. Didn't you get, yeah, didn't you get around the heel? Yeah, I finished. Oh my god, and I, yeah, that happened. But anyway, um, oh, you can see it better. This is much hey! better lighting. Hey, look at that. Much better lighting. Love this broken seed stitch. So yeah, last week I had just finished up um, on the heel and um, was picking up and there we go, I'm off. And so that, yeah, so the bottom is just stockinette stitch. So you get the alternating yarns and yeah, you can actually see some of the color much better. Mm -hmm. Yay. Okay. With the broken seed stitch. I just, I love that. Yeah, see, too close, you can't see it at all, but anyway. Okay, so that's the ongoing Broken Seed Stitch socks. And yep. yes, I knit shorties. And my my the thing I'm kind of concentrating right now, and it's on my bingo sheet, is my Butterfly Apillion. Pavilion Apillion. shawl. So... Uh, Here, let me get it. <laughs> I'm almost finished. Woohoo! I think I have three more sections oh, to do. Interesting texture. It's garter stitch. Yeah. I have three more sections to do. What, what kind of yarn is this? This is. Good question. This is the um, Zauber Ball, Crazy Zauber Ball. Um, it's just it's it's much, it's much coarser than I was expecting. I know it feels it to me this and the Malabrigo feel like almost like a cotton. And you know what? Yeah. I don't I don't have the tag right here. But this is so I I'm just going to start a new ball of yarn. So because I knew I was going to be hanging it out, I chose not to um, start it before, but um, so that's the crazy zauber ball that I'm using. I love these colors. They're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So it's something, it's a variegated yarn, but with a fairly long variegation, but not too long. And then the Malabrigo um, is the black. Um, but yeah, so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I'm, quite coarse. I'm hoping. Yes. That by well, I can run and get the tag. And, but, don't, don't worry about it. Um, I'm hoping that by next week I'll have this off the needles because it's time. <gasps> it's time. I do have a little. This got where am I? Yeah, this part right in here. Something funky happened right there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, it's kind well, of I actually, I, I know exactly what happened, but um, I'm hoping that when I block it, because I can pull it straight, so I'm hoping that it won't be too, anyway, so, yes, I just, damn, I love this pattern. Beautiful, and yeah, and, and yeah here's another one. Yeah, so, there's, those are my, those are my whips. Yay! Oh! Mike, hi. What do you bring to the table? Uh, today I bring to the table a board game. Going back to board games after last week's foray into programming. Yes. Um, 
Uh, I'm actually bringing today the the game that arguably started it all for me, and I really should have probably started with um, you. You gifted this to me on yes, my did. birthday uh, at the recommendation of someone else. It is the Settlers of Catan. Can you believe that was about eight years ago? That was about eight years ago. In fact, it is so long ago that another edition of this game has come out, and if I want to buy any expan any further expansions for this game, I have to get them in the old edition. Um, but we have all of them except for the five. Six. That's a point. This game has expand. I haven't said what this game is yet. Talk about the game. Um, in this game, you are playing settlers on the island of Catan, and you need to build up your settlements and build up. Uh, build up your settlements so you can collect resources, so you can trade resources, so you can build more settlements and get more resources, and eventually get 10 points and win the game. And it's it's the game is different every time you play it, not just in how it all goes out. The board is module, and, and you, you build it at the start of the game. Um, and yeah... I'm just trying to see their recommended... Oh, it's on the side here. Uh, it was on the side here. I just saw it. Oh, there it is. Uh, it recommended for ages 10 plus. Uh, they say it takes about 60 minutes today to play. That is a lie. It take, um, We would play it for hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. That's, that's a lot more realistic. And for three to four players. Yeah, you can't do this one with just two people. You no. need... Um, there, oh, but we did. There is an expan... One of the expansions, uh, Traders and Barbarians, has rules and additional additional stuff to make two players viable. I didn't like it. I didn't like that very much. I would much rather play with three players. Um, that being said, if you do enjoy this game, I highly recommend also picking up the Seafarers expansion. And if you like that too, get the Cities and Knights expansion then after. Um, there's also Traders and Barbarians and Explorers and Pirates. I don't recommend those ones as much, but if you're looking for more Catan, just pick them up. I like the Explorers and Pirates one because you got mystery islands to open up and stuff. But anyway, yeah, doesn't matter. You these boards they get bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger. More hexagons yeah. to it, and you do need a flat. You need a flat surface. surface. I hope, yeah, I hope in the new edition they've made the board fit together better. That's one of the problems with the game, but it's it's an absolute classic in in board gaming. Yeah. I know. Um, I saw a uh, someone on on a website was selling a first edition version of Settlers of Catan for $560. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Right. Anyway. Cool. Yeah, no, definitely a family yes. favorite. Good, good game. It can have a bit of a steep learning curve. Yeah, the rule, the rule book is not clear, at least not in this yeah. edition. So, but yeah, once... it's, it's like after you've read the rule book... <laughs> it feels like you're going like what and then you start I don't understand as, as soon, soon as you start, start playing, playing it makes sense it's all like ah! totally makes sense and if you've ever heard people express got sheep or no got wood got wood need sheep need sheep got sheep need wood that's where that's from yeah yeah don't ask house rule that's funny once yeah play the game yeah anyway okay so, Mike thinks that this could change. This could change. But he feels that he's chosen his next project mm -hmm. after the hat. After, the, after this Sean's hat. And it's going to be? Uh, I was thinking the, uh, the pattern we keep coming back to, the tilted cowl. Right. Oh, do I have one here? No, I don't. No, you no, don't. No, I don't. So, we should have grabbed one. Anyway. <laughs> um... Anyway, so that'll be coming up, and we'll do a cow for it. How exciting. We're going to do a cow. We're going to do a cow. Um, it's not starting this week. It's going to be starting next week after I finish the Sean's hat and when we can actually give you a this is the day that it is going to start. And, and so it may not even start next week. It may not even start next Oh, right, because you're camping. Yeah. We're, we're going to have to... We're going to see. Yeah, and we need to figure out prizes. and. Yeah. So, if you would be interested in joining Mike in his cow. Tilted, tilted. 
Journey ca- to the... Ca- cowl Cowl. Journey to the Cowl. Cowl Cowl. T- tilted Cowl Cowl. Yes. Um, you would want to pick up the pattern, which mm-hmm. we will put a, a link to. In the description, yep. And you want to... Um, it, it, it Three fingering weight yarns. I will say, I don't know that they have the kits anymore, but certainly Color Adventures through A Twist of Yarn in Vernon did have um, kits for this. And they, like I said, they probably don't specifically have kits anymore, but they might have some good suggestions for, for yarns to use from the Color Adventures line. So I'll just put that out there. Um, right. Okay. Now, so the other thing, I, I suppose I could save this till next week because I'm not going to do it anytime soon anyway. Never mind. We'll talk okay. about that next time. Watch us next week to figure out what Mom was talking about. Yay! Or mm, the week after that or whatever. Okay. So, our new segment that we added last week, Upcoming Events from Around the World. Woohoo! Okay, so on Saturday 19th, why don't I just specifically pick places that I can pronounce their names? Uh, You're the one who picks them. (laughs) Okay, Saturday the 19th in Toronto, Virginia, is the High Fiber Festival. And they're not talking about food. Okay, and on Saturday the 26th, there is the Cast On event in Dansdorf, Schleswig-Holstein, which I'm thinking is in Germany. You didn't write that part down. No, it didn't say that. Oh! It just said Dansdorf, Schleswig-Holstein. That's hyphenated. And, of course... On the 26th of May is the Edmonton Fiber Frolic, so in Alberta. So for all our Canadian Albertan friends, you your Fiber Frolic's coming up, and I know there's all sorts of buzz going on about that. Schleswig-Holstein is Germany's northernmost state. Nice. Okay, and coming up Saturday, June 9th, something for everybody everywhere. It's Knit in Public Day. Woo-hoo! So get out there and knit in, in public. public. Do it. So that's, um, yeah, that's, come, what did I say? On June 9th. On June 9th. So I know uh, we'll probably be doing that. In the past, we've um, done our knitting in public in Vernon um, at the, shoot, what is that called? Um, that garden with the waterfall. Uh by the courthouse. Oh, Justice Park? Justice Park. It's by the courthouse. Yeah. Justice Park. Um, I don't know if that's what's happening this year. We haven't talked about it yet. So, Native Public Day, Saturday, June 9th. Get out there. Sit in a park, on a beach, on a bench, in a cafe, whatever works. Knit. All right. I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay. Well, we're done talking about knitting and yarn for this week. Thank yep. you for joining us Thank again. Joining we us. so appreciate your support. I yep. can't even tell you. We would love it if you would, like, talk to us. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, bell. Join, Share. Join our Ravelry group. Yes. And we'll have tags so you can find all of those things. Um, so your knit along is still coming up. Yep. Haven't set the date for that yet. Nope. And, um, yay! Yay! Tilted cows, what else? Nothing, really. No. Happy Victoria Day Long Weekend coming up. Happy Mother's Day, which will be in the past when this goes up. Yep. But still happy Mother's Day. And cheers to all the other moms out there. Cheers to the kids who have moms. Cheers to the moms who have kids. That doesn't even make sense, does it? But anyway, of course they have kids and they're moms. Cheers to the sons who have moms. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. So keep your... Keep your knitting knitting close. close. (laughs) And And your your family family closer. closer. And I still say that's backwards. (laughs) 
Love Bye. you. <laughs>